ladies and gentlemen, you don't need the government's permission to have a citizen militia. It's there. It's part and parcel. It's in uh, even our state constitution. It is a natural law right. This is an action-oriented talk now on the citizens' militia. You might think, well, that's not for me. But uh, 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 you, everyone, every able-bodied person is a member of the citizen militia, and that's, I believe, in normal, correct me, in the state constitution. So what are you going to do about your right to keep and bear arms? Well, here's Norm Olson. Please give him a warm welcome. We are the cause. Keeping in bare arms is the effect. A well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state comma. We are those people who are exercising that right. And if it were not for the citizens' militia, if it were not for the citizen soldiers, we would not dare create the government at all. The government does not authorize a citizens' militia. The Constitution does not give the right of people to have a citizen's militia. God gave us that right. We were endowed by our Creator with these unalienable right, rights. Among these, among these, our life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Among these, there were others. Let me read a few quotes and see if you can see the similarity between these quotes. You know, this one is popular. I am William Wallace, and I see a whole army of my countrymen here in defense of tyranny. You have come to fight as free men, and free men you are. What will you do without freedom? Will you fight? Someone yelled out, 2,000 against 10,000? No, we will run and live. William Wallace said, yes, fight and you may die, run and you will live at least a while. And dying in your bed many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day until that? for one chance, just one chance, to come back here as young men and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they will never take our freedom. Here's another. These are times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of their country. But he who stands by it now deserves the love and thanks of men and women. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily con conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. That which we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. Patrick Henry said, Is life so dear a peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, all men, mighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Then there was another one. They that can give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Sam Adams said, if you love wealth more than liberty, the tranquility of servitude better than the animating contest of freedom, depart from us in peace. We ask not your counsel nor your arms. Crouch down and lick the hand that feeds you. May your chains rest lightly upon you, and may posterity forget that you were our countrymen. The similarity between these three or five quotes is this, they're words, just words. Enough perhaps to get someone's attention or to pique someone's curiosity, to search it out a little bit more. But words alone will not do. Can you imagine being in a house and your fire, a fire erupts in your home and you're screaming at the flames, go out, go out. Rather comical, but words alone just will not do. Rather, let me encourage you to take a stand. Let your words become boldness. And I will not laden you down with a long list of tyrannical acts being carried out right now by the central government against we, the free people. Suffice it to say that anyone who looks at the television or has a mind to rationally conceive of what in the world is happening in this country of ours knows that danger is very near and present. The economic collapse of this country is a foregone conclusion. The mathematics do not lie. It is coming. 
We need not worry too much about asteroids out of the skies or terrorist explosions here or there. We need to understand that when this economy fails, we all sink, we all go down, and it creeps upon us slowly, gradually, eating away our substance, taking away our, li our life, uh, 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 livelihood. That is coming. We must face the reality. Your being here tonight may have been a courageous act. I don't know you all. Some of you might have said, well, I'll go see what's going on out there. And if so, then at least you're on the right track. Courage to come out and to investigate, see what these men are saying. Some of you have come to declare openly your position on the Second Amendment. And if you've done that, that too is good. But there is one more step you must eventually take. And that step is to put actions to your words. Or they will be just words. And I would like to think that one day, our great-grandchildren, our posterity, will come to the place where we're buried and stand in hallowed memory, remembrance of what we stood for and what we tried to do, rather than to have the generations to come visit the cemetery and curse the day that we live, because now they are living in chains and slavery. Some of you have declared your position on the Second Amendment, and that is good. That is good. But there's one more step you must eventually take. You're going to have to put actions to your words. You must eventually prepare yourself physically, materially, and spiritually to endure the storm that is coming our way. The greatest failing that America has today is not its, not its economy. It's not the need for more jobs. The greatest need in America today is that we might return to the spiritual ideals and principles that have been passed down to us from great men and great women, from our founding fathers, from God himself. We must return to the spiritual base of who we are as human beings. This is no time for fear. Yet fear can compel us to a positive behavior. You're frightened of a fire. So you put up a smoke alarm. You're frightened of your children drowning, so you put life jackets on them when you go out on the lake. Fear is a positive thing, but also fear can be a very debilitating emotion, stifling the best of who we are, stopping us from standing, making us timid where we need to be courageous. But you must consider whether your fear is directed toward your fellow citizen soldiers, your fellow neighbors, like myself and others. We are your neighbors. We are your people. We are armed because we have a common threat that is coming our way. But are you more frightened of me? Are you more frightened of the Alaska Citizens Militia? Are you more frightened of the uniforms than you are of the federal government and the tyrants and the oppressors that are coming our way? That's the question you must ask and answer. You must consider whether you fear your fellow countrymen more than you fear the tyrant. I feel that there is a great amount of fear today, that stifling fear. You're frightened to speak. You're frightened to tell what you think, what you believe. You're frightened to write a letter. You're frightened to put your name on a list. You're frightened to give an, a, a, the correct name when a, when a reporter asks you questions. What are you frightened of? We don't have to recruit with promises of good pay, promotion, college educations, and retirement benefits. We have nothing like that for you. 
The United States military uses these incentives as external motivators. <coughs> I served more than 20 years in the military. And though I enjoy the incentives even now, and the benefits, we took an oath that had nothing to do with that. You who are soldiers remember. It wasn't about the pay or the benefits. There was something else burning in our heart. That oath is something to be kept. We have nothing to offer you like that, no external motivators. We simply beg that you seek down deep in your heart the truths that you know are there. We offer you hope, however. If a calamity is coming, then we want to help you through it. We want to prepare for the crisis. We want to see you through the crisis. We want to help you to restore your life after the crisis. We want to have a network of individuals throughout this community, yea, across the peninsula, around the state, networking to help each other in the time of need. Do not look to the state militia, the National Guard, they are not here. Do not look to the Alaska Citizens Defense Force, or the State Defense Force, because they are under the control of the governor. We, the people, are the last line of defense. We are the last line in the sand. And if we give that responsibility over to someone else, and we neglect to defend ourselves for what we know is right, what we know is ours, for our children and grandchildren's sake, then we might as well dig the hole, climb in, and ask someone to throw the dirt in on us. We might as well quit. Cease being Americans. Give away our heritage. Give away our culture. Give away our history. As Schaefer mentioned, you are all rebels. You are genetic rebels. Your great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents came over from, from burdensome countries where dictators and land barons and, and feudal lords existed. Your great-grandparents, your people, came here so that they might be free, so they may own the property. They could pick the dirt up in their hands and say, this is mine. They exercised the most supreme kind of rebellion possible. They packed up and left. They were excellent rebels. We are the descendants of those rebels. You are genetic rebels. Accept the fact you are Americans, different from anyone else on this globe. Close with this. Americans perhaps today have been called penthouse Americans for a very interesting reason. Imagine you will if you are in a 50-story building with a grand penthouse at the top and everyone is having a grand time. Grand time but not knowing that the first three or four floors of that building are burning. Having a good time without thinking of the danger coming. The best advertising for the Alaska Citizens Militia is simply to look around America today. We have literature on the table. We'll answer all of your questions, whatever they may be. Be comfortable with the Alaska Citizens Militia. We are you. We are you who are willing to stand in defense of what God has given us. And we're not going to back down. Better to die on our feet than to live on our knees. Better to be free people than to be under chains and servitude. I thank you for your time.